What's going on, y'all? This is John Alsace with the Face Mask Podcast, and today I wanted to get into a backfield breakdown of a team that we haven't talked about at all this past offseason, and I apologize for that. That's the Miami Dolphins. We really haven't talked about this offense at all, so let's dig into it. Their depth chart looks like this. Miles Gaskin, Malcolm Brown, Jared Dokes, Salvin Ahmed, and Lynn Bowden. Now, Gaskin led the team in rushing right out the gate. He ended the season with 584 yards and three touchdowns on the ground, and he had the lion's share of snaps. Gaskin averaged over 18 touches per game, and he put up 14.4 half PPR points weekly, which ranked 11th among all running backs. And he was in on 69.4% of Miami snaps in his 10 games that he played. In all, Gaskin averaged 58.4 rushing yards per week with an additional 4.1 receptions and 38.8 receiving yards, and ended the year with 41 catches for 388 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Speaking on his receiving prowess, Gaskin caught 41 of a possible 47 targets for an 87.2 catch percentage. Extrapolated out to 16 games, that's a pace of 75 targets and 66 receptions, both of which would have been top 5 RB numbers last season. So now if you extrapolate all that, all the totals, into a 16 game season, he would have rushed for 996 yards and 6 touchdowns on top of the receiving work, which would have garnered him 62 receptions for 652 yards and 4 touchdowns. He would have had had 1,648 all-purpose yards and 10 touchdowns, and those are impressive numbers. They're better than what James Robinson got last season, and he broke a bunch of rookie records for rookie production from the running back position. On top of that, Gaskin had 31 missed tackles forced, which is a solid number when you think about it, and he had 360 yards after contact, so it shows that he can create yards by himself. Now, with only Malcolm Brown, who they signed in free agency this offseason, in 2021, seven rounder Jared Dokes. Gaskin enters 2021 as the clear-cut starter for the Dolphins when everybody thought they would bring in somebody else to take away some of this workload. But opportunity is everything, and if he gets the type of opportunity again in 2021 while playing all the games, he's going to finish as a top 15 back. Now, we spoke a little bit about Malcolm Brown. He was added to the backfield mix, but the early indication is that he's going to be the short yardage back only, the role that we saw them sign Jordan Howard for last season. Now, Brown was never a able to take hold of a big role on the Rams. He's just not built for a large role. They tried to give it to him out of the gate last season, and while he had a great first game, he did nothing else pretty much all season. But if he's strictly a goal line option, I could see why the Dolphins signed him. The only thing is, Gaskin was actually a more effective red zone runner. Despite only playing 10 games, Gaskin was tied 12th among all running backs, with 21 carries inside the 10-yard line. In all, he accumulated 40 red zone touches in 2020. That's impressive. And if he can mimic that sort of usage, again, he's going to be an RB1. Now, Salvin Ahmed is also in the mix, but he was a complete non-factor when Gaskin was active. And he didn't do much while Gaskin was injured last season. So the rest of this backfield isn't much to write home about. Obviously, we have Jared Dokes there. And this team is not opposed to using running backs with lesser draft capital and giving them large workloads throughout the season. But there's nothing about his profile or the way that the Dolphins have gone about this past offseason that would suggest that Gaskin... Gaskin is not going to be their number one running back for the whole season. Now, with an ADP on underdog in the top half of the fifth round, Gaskin is an excellent mid-round target at running back, as he is a high-volume RB2 who can also excel in the passing game, which I think can elevate him to RB1 status. And one thing that we didn't talk about was the fact that they have Will Fuller in the fold now, they have Jalen Waddle in the fold now, Devontae Parker is now playing a role in this offense that suits him best, Mike Gesicki now has somebody in Hunter Long who can take a little bit off his shoulders, Miami has the potential to be a top 12 offense in 2021. And if that's the case, and and Gaskin can approach RB1 status with his usage and effectiveness, this could be a really exciting offense. As of right now, Gaskin should probably be considered a solid running back too. And you might be able to get him as your RB3 or throw him in your flex spot, but he has a chance to really be a steal. In Dynasty, he's undervalued, especially considering his young age. He's only going to be 24 this season. And while we do have to keep in mind that he is a contender buy, it's not recommended for you to go out and buy him if you're a rebuild, as his low draft capital makes him largely expendable, as we've seen with the recent change in value for a guy like James Robinson after they signed Travis Etienne. James Robinson was a back who had similar draft capital to Gaskin. In redraft and best ball, I love Gaskin. And at his ADP, he's a steal. But in keeper, be wary, as his value could be one year from tanking. But in terms of 2021 production, he's as 
solid a bet as any. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm too high on Miles Gaskin considering his draft capital? Do you guys think I'm undervaluing Jared Dokes or Malcolm Brown? Or do you think I'm overvaluing the new additions that they brought to this offense as a whole? One person that we did not talk about was the quarterback in Tua. So put your thoughts in the comment section below about everything that I talked about in this video. And let me know how you think Tua Tungavailoa will affect Miles Gaskin and this whole running back group. Thank you for listening. This is John Alsace with the Face Mask Podcast. Have a great day.